Hey everybody, I wanted to do like a shop update. Kind of ended the last build with no builds in uh, in queue or uh, halfway being built. Usually I have a nice staggered line of kits where when one's almost done, I got one that's about ready to be painted and assembled. And then usually I have one that has no paint on it, it's just starting to be glued. Well this time I kind of uh, got out of rhythm and everything just ended up being done at the same time. I think I had three or four builds that just got done at the same time. And it kind of threw me out of uh, a groove. And um, so now I'm starting two right off the bat. I was looking through my kits and I wanted to do something different. The tiger shark I just got for my birthday a little bit ago. And it's a really cool car. It's based off of a show car, I think from the late 50s, I think it is. I looked it all up on, and there's a lot of information on it. And uh, I had the Predicta, which was in my stash for quite a while now. And these two cars were you know rolling pieces of art back in the day where they actually made these cars just as like a concept vehicle show their skills and just try to change the world in the automotive world so I figured these two kits would go great together building them at the same time I don't I have other ones but I'll end up building those together because I have the concept Corvette kits. So I had like the Aerovet, the Corvette Indy, uh, the Stingray 3. Um, I think I have one more that's kind of in that group. But I don't remember it. I'll have to actually look through. But those will go good together. These two would go good together. I don't know if they ever were showed at the same time. I'm probably going to look up more information on the two and see. The Tiger Shark comes with a like a, a rotating platform, but if you're familiar with that from the older kits, the car don't even fit on the platform. So what I might end up doing, I still probably will build that. I will probably make a actual platform for it that the car does fit on, and maybe just some kind of a you know, 50s, 60s. Uh, car show kind of platform that would look cool so on the Tiger Shark it is a big Ford based kind of car it does have the I think 283 Ford small block V8 and this is what I got so far I did the Ford engine blue I did the gold oil pan like I usually do um, the carb has no detail as you can see there no detail at all and there is no air cleaner it's just a straight up carb on there I mean it don't look that great I really don't want to buy the aftermarket carbs and all that for it but I'm going to try to think of a way to make that look a little bit better so, and another cool thing about this car is the headers point towards the front and then it has a U-pipe and then spits out the back. And I think that was some way of trying to save space in the front. Like I said, they're trying to change the world on it. I had to do a lot of sanding on this. I had a Bondo spot there and a Bondo spot there and you can still see that. The top is going to be like a black saint didn't really paint that and this is just the first coat had a lot of sand to do I think it ran out of paint and it started sputtering but this is not the color I'm going with this is just like a kind of a base I had a little bit of the lighter orange of the testers colors I have a darker orange that's what I'm going to do so this is kind of just toning it I think it was a little too windy when I painted it but I really didn't care I was going to wet sand it anyhow so I'm going to wet sand it and then spray the other one on there so that didn't really bother me too much uh, 
doors open and all that. And the hood, of course. But I end up doing a lot of sanding on this kit. There's a little bit of shrinkage, I'd call it, right there from the mold. Where it pulled back away a little bit. And then some right there. And then there's a lot of rough edges on it. So there's that one. And then on the Predicta, it was the same. Uh, this old line right here is really hard to sand. And if you watch my classic car, when he goes to this guy's museum that designed this, this is the hood from the car he used as a base. This was the hood for, I think it was a 56 Thunderbird. And so that's why it has such a awkward shape for being a trunk. You know, normally this line would be smooth. And then looking at the museum piece, there was no seam line there. So I'm still working on that a little bit. And I still got some scratches, but probably the first coat of paint will probably end up filling those scratches when I paint it and sand it. And then this one has a cool bubble top, and I had to do a little bit of sanding and cutting in here to get the frame for the bubble top to sit flat. Uh, so I actually did that. One thing with this car is the body was really nicely molded in a blue metallic. You can't see it in this, but it was really pretty. And I was thinking I was just clear coating it until I saw the seam line. But then when you look at the real car, it's not this dark. It's a much lighter blue. It's actually a prettier looking blue than that one. This one might be too light. And I got a better blue than that one. But I might paint it the same color as I painted that skyline. A yeah, really dark, um, heavy metallic blue. It's lighter than the body, but it's darker than that. Other one I got. And one of the odd things is with this kit. Look how skinny those headers are. Now, from what the kit shows is right, from what I saw on the real car, it is powered by a firepower Hemi. And I can't believe that those little lines would not be restricting the airflow on a Hemi. But I'm going to use them in the kit. So that's where I'm at on the Hemi. I'm going to put fuel lines. I already drilled them there. I actually drilled out let's see if I, could. I drilled out all the velocity stacks and kind of gave them a taper. Use a bigger drill bit right on the tip of it and just took out a little bit of plastic just to give it the kind of a curvature. Now I don't plan on wiring this one and the reason being is the distributor is back here and then the wires went straight in here and then you didn't see them so most of the builds that this one be the wires go like that well the firewall mostly most of the time that I saw online and everything you don't see the ignition wires on that so I don't think I'm gonna wire it I will wire these put some kind of fuel line or so even though that plate has fuel lines there showing I figured I had a little bit of detail so it didn't look like it just threw the kit together and of course the gold oil pan so I just got that together there so there's the little update well I'll show the rims I got some nice cool knockoffs in there. I had to strip the chrome. The chrome was awful in this kit. It was pretty old. Not pretty old, but I mean, I think this kit's probably 94. For chrome, it might be kind of old because uh, 
1990. I don't think the room lasts too long on models. In 20 years, the chrome looked pretty bad on most of the builds, so it might be a good thing I stripped it anyhow. Um, on the last video, thanks so much for everybody who voted. I thought that was a lot of fun to see what you guys actually thought was the best build. I appreciate all the great comments. I've been falling behind on the comments and I really feel bad about it. I, I usually try to have them no further than three days but uh, before I would actually comment back on people usually on my lunch break at work or when I wasn't working I would comment at home. Well now I'm back at work and with the times that we are in now I have my lunch out in the car and by the time I get out to the car and all that I really don't have no time to do anything so uh, I'm going to be getting back on that comments. I really appreciate comments so don't take that me not responding to them as me not enjoy reading them and getting you guys' input. That's the complete opposite. I really enjoy seeing you guys' comments, being part of the, the group. Um, one thing that I do really like about YouTube versus like Facebook and that YouTube seems more personal than Facebook. You actually, we're all talking on the videos and we're all interacting with the comments and all that. It seems more of a closer friendship than Facebook ever was in the groups. And uh, so I really appreciate everything that everybody says. I am up to 200 subscribers. I think 204 today. I do plan on doing some kind of drawing it's only 200 but this is the important 200 these are the people who helped you get going in the earliest times and the people who will probably be there as long as you're making videos they will be here the longest on, on the channel so you guys are the most important ones to me and to the channel so instead of just giving out a model which is a lot of fun that only gives it to one person. I do want to do something smaller, but something more personal that I can give out to more people. It won't be to all 200. I can't do that. But um, I'm thinking of maybe it might be six people. It might be too random. And um, maybe four. Uh, award kind of based ones for uh, certain people that really helped me get to where I'm at on this channel. It haven't been a year yet but it's very getting very close and I'm very happy with the way everything has actually been going and without the subscriptions and without people doing comments I would have gave up a long time ago so it's actually um, because of everybody out there being so kind and supportive that I'll actually want to continue this. And then the last thing that I wanted to share it was actually a pretty cool thing I saw on Amazon and uh, I'm trying to build a diorama and I wanted to do the steel fences or the steel roofs, the corrugated roofs and I know you can get this out of the cardboard, you know, ripping the cardboard apart. But it does end up looking like you ripped it out of cardboard. So I end up finding a paper crimper. I think they call it. Paper corrugator. And uh, this is what it looks like. So you can actually open it up. So you can see it's opened up. And then you can clamp it down. So you take your paper put it in there straight, clamp it down and this will be smooth of course and then you just twist it like that comes out the other end and it'll be corrugated so this you can do your fences your roofs and stuff like that you can take cardboard or you can actually use the tin from like a aluminum cooking pan one of them disposable usually get them for turkeys so you can use that 
and then just weather it a little bit or get a piece of cardboard paint it silver paint it black and rust it up weather it up you got plenty of options it does seem to this is from a box a bottom of a model car box it does hold its shape very well and I can imagine I mean it's flexible like that but I mean the crimp it holds that crimp well but you can paint that up rust it up and then you can get your little wall and then you can cut it into sizes there's a roof I want to do this with I'll end up trying it but I got this off of Amazon and it's called the Marvi Yusheta <laughs> or so um, and that's the name on it so that'll kind of give you an idea you can look that up and see alright guys I've rambled on quite a bit I figured I'd share a thing and um, oh I keep going on so much here is the grand tally on the voting the 50 Ford won it that was actually my favorite out of them all too so we all think the same alright guys have a good day and I'll talk to you next time